Welcome to another Six Patterns video. I'm Kevin. And I'm Max. We'd like to share with you today uh, topic six of our top 25 pearls in pulmonary pathology. Topic six is key elements of interstitial lung disease and how to diagnose interstitial lung disease and apply these in your practice. We are going to deal with pearl number three in topic six. That is correct. And that is a lung biopsy, obviously, from a patient who happens to be 42 years old, who's had shortness of breath with cough for about six months. Six months. Six months. Subacute presentation. Subacute presentation. Right on the edge of going to chronic. To chronic, right. Not okay. for years. Right. And not for a week. Yeah. Somewhere in between. Yeah. And this is always scary for pulmonologists because frequently they'll watch these patients evolve in their practice over two or three months and they're not getting better, they're getting worse. So there is a certain concern uh, on their part in this particular scenario. So a CT scan was done, which shows nodules. Bilateral nodules? Bilateral nodules. We're not nodules. talking about tumor nodules, we're talking about bilateral nodules. Little nodules. Small nodules. Yeah, little tiny nodules in the- Miliary metastatic disease. Exactly, except that they're in the mid and upper lung zone, and we all know that metastatic tumor tends to involve the periphery and the lower lung zones. Because it's a, a vascular, vascular process, process, and vascular processes tend to be lower lung zones. Inhalational and inhalational disease tend to be upper lung zones. So nodules in the mid and upper lung zones makes you think make you think about things like hypersensitivity pneumonitis, right? For sure. But those are fuzzy nodules, and these are described as discrete nodules. So we might be Maybe thinking of pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Smoking related. Smoking related. Sometimes with cysts. Right on the CT, yep, sometimes or, cyst. irregularly or, walled cysts. Yeah, crazy. What do they say? call them? Call them pleomorphic cysts. Yep. So another possibility with small nodules in the mid and upper lung zones: a classical silicosis. Uh, pneumoconiosis. Pneumoconiosis can produce sharply defined, bright white nodules. These are kind of in the middle. They're described as nodules, and there's a term used here called in the by the radiologists of Perilymphatic. Mm. And that's supposed the to be something to it. See it. Yeah, perilymphatic. Because they have a distribution. When they look at the way nodules are, they can see if they're central lobular and they can see if they're perilymphatic. And the reason is when nodules involve the airways and the pleura and the interlobular septa and the fissures, that's a perilymphatic pattern. Because that's where the lymphatics are, right? Correct. You've got lymphatics in your bronchovascular bundle, you've got lymphatics in your pleura. And you've got lymphatics in your intralobular septa. So that 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 perilymphatic distribution radiographically must we, mean something. And we would hope it would be recapitulated on the pathology. Correct. So what I would do right now is go to Google. I'm not. I don't have any stock in Google. I, I need to be up, up front with you guys. But go to Google and write in perilymphatic lung nodules and see what comes up, because this diagnosis will probably come up. It probably will. Okay, so although we are using Google to create these videos, uh, that's true. So I think Google owns it's, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, exactly. So it's all we're all part of the same family. That's okay. So a lung biopsy is done. A beautiful surgical wedge biopsy. Max, what do you see in this biopsy? I mean, a fantastic wedge biopsy. We have plenty of tissue to look at. <clears throat> it looks like it's been processed pretty well too. Yeah. We've got nice multiple sections here, and. I would say that the imaging studies are nicely recapitulated here on this biopsy. Yeah. In that we have nodules. Right. So we're not worried that they've missed the sample. We definitely have a nodular process. Right. And it's kind of from low power to me, it looks like a pink nodular process. Yeah. And not only does it look like it's perhaps around the bronchovascular bundles, right. but I'm seeing a lot of disease out here within the pleura as well. Right. And so even from low power. I would hazard to guess. We'd have to go to high power to see, but I wonder if this might be an intralobular septa. So that really fits with the CT, which is good. I mean, it should. Uh, but now you guys as pathologists can look at this and say, no, we could predict that this is perilymphatic on the CT. And that just amazes pulmonologists and radiologists that we actually can look at the tissue and make a prediction about what they're seeing the CT on the CT. Like. I mean, that's really full circle, right? Yeah. Clinical presentation, radiology, pathology. If you can go pathology back to radiology, back to how the patient's clinic uh, presenting, you got you've got the whole the whole enchilada. Deal. 
Okay. So maybe we should go to higher power and yep. see what these actually are. And we go to higher power wow. around this broncovascular bundle here. Oh, yeah, look at that. And we can appreciate what's going on. Man. Yeah, Those I are mean, granulomas. And <clears throat> I always have enjoyed what you like to say about granulomas. Oh, no. I hope it's not off color. <laughs> Sorry. We'll, we'll have to keep it clean for, for this video. For all videos, for gosh sake. But granulomas, I mean... They're every pathologist's best friend. Yeah. Because when you see this collection of histiocytes with giant cells, you you know what to say. Right. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. It's a granuloma. And then you can go around looking for asteroid bodies. Oh, yeah. In the multinucleated giant bodies. cells. And Shalman, Shalman bodies. And bodies. Some calcifications in the giant cells. Right. Some so asteroid bodies, Shalman bodies, and granulomas right. so much fun to look for right. so much fun to identify but they really don't mean anything right because all those things you said can occur in any granulomatous disease in the lung right so well, how are we going to navigate these granulomas i mean there also seems to me to be not one big granuloma here do you notice that i can't see one big granuloma i'm seeing 25 little granulomas making a big nodule Right, so granulomas coalescing together. Granulomas of similar size. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's yeah. one, here's one. Similar size coalescing into larger nodules. And the crazy thing is that if you take this one level lower magnification in the patient, these little nodules we see here are barely visible. So what's happening in the patient is they've got nodules that are becoming confluence of these nodules made up of many nodules so it's like it's like a bag of marbles and then 10 bags of bags, of, bags of, marbles of marbles put together and that's how you get the radiographic evidence of disease so we've got granulomas this case actually came to us innumerable non-necrotizing granulomas i did my afb and gms stains i don't see any infectious organisms what do you think this might be oh actually frequent of these lung surgical biopsies will come with saying have you ever seen anything like this? Because it is so distinctive when you see it in the surgical biopsy, because most pathologists are used to diagnosing this or suggesting it in the transbronchial biopsy, where you get one or two granulomas with a little fibrosis around them, no necrosis, and you say, non-necrotizing granulomatous inflammation, rule out sarcoidosis. That's what you kind of say in your report. Right. So... <clears throat> Oftentimes people see granulomas on the lung biopsy and they flip open the book and they look at the list of things that cause granulomas yeah. in the lung, right? And they run across things like infection and they run across things like sarcoid and they run across things like borreliosis and they run across things like hypersensitivity pneumonitis and they run across things Wegener granulomatosis. like Wegener granulomatosis. So all of these different etiologies that can cause quote unquote granulomatous lung disease. But the reality is, this particular case it's is only one disease. Is diagnostic and it's only one disease. And we can exclude all the other possibilities based on the appearance of these granulomas, their distribution, and the background findings. This is sarcoidosis. Now, some people call this nodular sarcoidosis, but all sarcoidosis is nodular, so it's kind of a kind of a, a, a double whammy to say it that way. It's the hyaline sclerosis in the middle and surrounding the granulomas. So the, the bigger granuloma will have this stringy refractile Dense collagen. collagenous fibrosis. Very characteristic. That hyaline sclerosis associated with the granulomas. Like you say, very characteristic. And that brings up the, the really the pearl associated with this case is that the granulomas of sarcoidosis are, distinct. are quite distinctive. And in fact, they're diagnostic. This is one of the few diffuse parenchymal lung diseases you can diagnose with confidence on the transbronchial biopsy because of how clear and diagnostic the histologic features are. And when you call your clinician, what they're going to say to you is, oh yeah, we, we were pretty sure it was That's sarcoid. That's what we thought. And you're like, well, why'd you do the biopsy? Oh, we needed confirmation. So you say, okay. I confirm it. If you give them a laundry list of this could be infection, this could be borreliosis, blah, 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 you're going to really confuse them because they're like, geez, maybe the clinical presentation is not what I thought it was. No, this is sarcoidosis. Exactly. So, now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a case of sarcoidosis on a wedge biopsy that had no pleural involvement? 
if you have pleura, you are going to see a granuloma. You should have pleural involvement. Yeah. Yeah, so, so if you have a wedge biopsy with pleura, you should have pleural involvement. So that's a that, that's a, another nice test you can ask yourself. You say, okay, I see multiple granulomas. I see what I think is dense hyaline sclerosis. Check the pleura and check the interlobular septae. In sarcoid, they will always be involved. Right. Always. Right. Because of the lymphangetic distribution. Should we do stains on this case? Well, I say anytime you see granulomas, you do stains. Okay. So these are the automatic things. If we don't do them, if you don't do them, you have a, you appear to have a deficit as though you didn't think of it. So if you're really confident, you say, I know it's sarcoid, you still do the stains, AFB, GMS, they're going to be negative. But it, it looks nice in your report. I don't mean to pad the the... No, no, the, no. The billing, but I think you do need to do this because you will get calls from infectious disease saying, wait, 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 wait here. Are you telling me you're a pathologist, you did not do stains on a granuloma? In the case of granulomas, yeah, come on. Because they don't know about the sarcoid granulomas. Right. But this might not be a case where I would get AFB and GMS on every block. No, just I one. I might just get one. Here's a beautiful pleural gr granuloma. Yep. Okay, now one more thing before we finish up with this case. Necrotizing sarcoid. Yeah. So necrotizing sarcoid doesn't look like sarcoidosis, so it doesn't look like this. It's a different... It, it looks like uh, granulomatosis polyangiitis to me with, with more distinctive granulomatous inflammation because GPA generally doesn't have very distinctive granulomatous inflammation. And so, so do you think it's related to sarcoid? Do you think it's its own no. disease process? I think it's vas some form of immune-mediated vasculitis. vasculitis. I agree. So this idea of necrotizing sarcoid, I, I mean, I personally have never made a diagnosis of necrotizing sarcoid. I would go down the line of some type of vasculitis and or infection. associated vasculitis or an infectious right. process. You're going to be fooled by infection. If you're thinking of necrotizing sarcoid, it's probably infection, even if your stains are negative. True. And you should see another video, which we can link. We can link that. Yep, absolutely. Okay, Max, I think we nailed it. All right, we did. Uh, that is um, one of our pearls here. And don't forget to like and comment below and let us know what you think. Thank so you. remember, the granulomas of sarcoidosis are distinctive. Thank you.